My name is Sharla Schaefer, and it's a privilege to work with the Community Foundation. I appreciate uh, you taking a few moments to learn more about the Community Foundation and the work we do. You know, I say often that people try to change the world with their opinion, but cha talk does not ch change the world, action does. And I think that's at the core of the Community Foundation and the work we do. I read once there's two kinds of people. There's those that sit and talk, and then there's the dancers, those that listen and move. And philanthropists are actually dancers through their time, through their treasure, and through their talents that they share to better our world. You know, I wear a watch that says, now is a good time to remind myself. Uh, it's our responsibility to make change, that we need to make change for the children, we may need to make change for our community, and we need to make change for our neighbors. And in order to do that, we have to have the collective power to come together and improve the lives through upstream thinking. And we'll talk more about that as we work through. But we need to have upstream thinking around housing and health care and equity and economic development and music and the arts. And as we do that, it will improve Muskegon County. Now, I think Muskegon County is a truly amazing place to live. I've grown up here. I've raised my children. It's been a blessing. But I also think we have the opportunity to make it better, and the lives of those that live in it better. And when we talk about opportunities and don't dance, what happens is someone's life is diminished from fulfillment, or a child doesn't reach their full potential. So we have to work together. Now I want to start with giving you a little backstory on the Community Foundation. Dick McGlean brought the idea of Community Foundations to Muscatine many, many years ago. We've actually been open 22 years now. And with that, then Jim Neppel provided the leadership and the office space to move us forward. But as many of you know, Dick also pioneered Muscatine Center for Social Action. And just this oct last October, he passed away. I, I mention this because he'll be deeply missed for his vision, but also for how he's visibly changed our community for the better, because Dick took action. So what does the Community Foundation actually even do? We're community builders, quite simply. And we do that through two, two ways. We serve as community leaders, collaborators, and conveners around the, the most important pressing priorities. And we marshal resources and we deploy capital. We have four strategic pillars. Collaboratively address the community's biggest challenges with upstream thinking. Marshal resources to and for our community. Have focused prioritized granting and a winning team. And so we'll talk through each of those. The first is to collaboratively address the community's biggest challenges. Um, we're excited to participate in a continued evolution with our donors and other partners, reimagining ways that we can work better together, how we can leverage our expertise, and how we can engage diverse resources in order to have community benefit. So often communities try to um, address issues in silos, and that's suboptimal for success. And often, and too often actually, we treat the outcomes without preventing the issues. So often we, we ask ourselves, you know, how can we get the most value out of the dollars we spend? We can increase funding or we can decrease need. And we know when we decrease need, children's uh, childhoods are, are emboldened and actually our whole community is enriched. And so that's where we believe the most impactful way to start is. To that end, we'll give you some examples in the next few minutes of the collaborative collective upstream work we're doing and um, talk a little bit about, again, the, our partners along that way. The first is Feeling the Future. So Feeling the Future is a program that we began with our partners, and you can see our partners listed there, Trinity Muscatine, Public Health, Muscatine Community College, the City of Muscatine, Muscatine Center for Social Action, Aligned Impact Muscatine, and United Way. Um, I'm going to start, and then we'll talk a bit more, but just with a quick video. This video is from 2020. Through the Employer Innovation Fund, Future Ready Iowa is also working to spur innovation among employers and communities in addressing their workforce needs. In Muscatine, the local community foundation has partnered with Muscatine Community College and Eastern Iowa Community College to create an extensive six-week program for low-income parents who have children in school. They're working to become welders or certified nursing assistants and if they stay on track in this program, a job will be waiting for them at the end. So this program is aimed at children that take home weakened food backpacks to stem their hunger. And we know that children can't fill their heads when their bellies are empty. 
So we were at a, actually a 2019 Community Foundation board meeting when we were funding children receiving food backpacks, and that's important to do because we have to make sure their hunger is, uh, is addressed. But what we said is we give the same child a food backpack in kindergarten as we do in 12th grade, and don't try to change their circumstances. Shame on us. And from that, we collectively came together to design a holistic program that provides for multi-generational success and with Trinity Muscatine Public Health taking the lead. So we're stabilizing the families in an effort to allow the children to no longer need their food backpacks and, and find success. Another example, the Community Foundation actually owns, if you can look on the left, it's the clinic building that's attached to the hospital and Unity Point has offices in there. The Community Foundation owns that building, and we're making plans to replace it. It's in very, very uh, aged uh, shape, and it, it's time to um, bring a new, new uh, building online. So with the direction from the Mustang Health Support Fund um, committee members, they're making recommendations to us, we're getting ready to replace this building. Now this is a picture, you'll see some familiar faces from 1975 when it was originally built. At that time, the Muscatine Health Support Foundation owned the building. And they had a very innovative idea around the, on how they could give back to the community through health care. Now, to give you an idea, in 2017, the Mustang Health Support Foundation actually dissolved and brought those assets to the Community Foundation, which shows the long-term viability of the Community Foundation in order to continue good work going forward. With this, what happens is we receive rents as we have all along in its history. And from the rents that we receive for the building, those are granted back into the community so that we can uh, further strengthen the health system. And I believe over $6 million through this project has gone back to strengthen the health system along the way. But the primary reason that it's important for us to hone the health clinic um, within the community is it's aimed at rural health access equity. We have to have access for, for health care in our community. And what we know is by allowing this, this um, building to be rebuilt, we'll be able to continue, as they did in 1975, to strengthen the local president of, presence of quality primary health care in our community. We know that's important, and we want to run alongside that. So re, um, in the upcoming uh, few months, we'll be undertaking some funding along those lines. Sometimes we haven't as effectively leveraged and focused together as we should around the pressing priorities. Um, I say often that what we do is we pick out the drapes when we have a hole in the roof and we forget to address the hole. And so we've collectively begun to focus on some foundational priorities, one being housing. Uh, we have a need for housing across all wealth classes. And to give you, there, we could give you many, many stats, but I'm going to focus on three. First, we have 11,000 people driving into our county every day to work. And for many, they would live in our county if there was housing available for them. Housing is vital for economic development and for business growth. And a third, our children on free lunches are changing schools within the school districts three to four times more often than one on a regular um, meal plan within our school district in a given year, three to four times more often. And what's that caused from? The high cost of housing. And again, uh, we, if, we can have a, if we have a supply side failure and if we can come together around that and increase the housing and increase the quality of housing, we'll make a difference for our community. So this spring, we collaboratively developed a countywide housing plan, and you can see the partners there with the city of Muscatine, Muscatine County, and Kent Corp as the Community Foundation alongside. With that, housing plan has been um, uh, adopted by both the city and the county, Muscatine City and the county, and we continue to work on that. We're, we're currently working on a neighborhood revitalization plan that the Iowa Economic Development Group um, reached out to us to ask us to pilot, and we're working with the partners we have there as well as Muscatine Center for Social Action. In addition, we're expanding our partners and we're going to have a housing council beginning at the end of this month to work on different task groups and, and bring more partners alongside. And we know that's important in order to reach our goals. To that end, uh, we have just brought a home that we purchased. Uh, the prisoners at the Newton Penitentiary built this home. It came in one piece. It's completely done. The, the, the prisoners are trained by um, uh, uh, craftsmen that are master level so that they can learn the best skills. And it's, as I said, delivered to a Muscatine. And we we'll, are putting it someplace. There was a lot that had a dilapidated home on it. It was overgrown with brush that the city has donated to us. We've cleared that, and we have this new home there. Uh, we worked alongside Hackett Construction in preparing the lot. 
What's important about this is two things. First off, the, P the prisoners that work on this um, housing trade training are 30% less likely to return to jail than any other trade training they work in. Because upon entry, there's jobs waiting for them, and they're highly recruited, and we want to support that. And secondarily, we'll have a first-time home buyer, so we're creating an additional space of home. We'll have a first-time home buyer living there, we hopefully by Christmas. And the icing on the cake, of course, is it's create, creating revolving property taxes for the city so they can continue to do good work as well. Another strategic priority is marshaling resources. We've grown a bit in size, friends, and impact over the last few years. The trust so many have in the Community Foundation has, uh, is evidenced by the growing generosity we see. As you look at this, you can see we're at about $63 million in assets, and 10 years ago, we were at $6 million. These assets help serve today by having a, the, helping the community thrive and grow. But they also, in many cases, the donors want to anchor some of those dollars to, for a percentage of them to create lasting change. And we do that as well and work alongside them. In addition to the number, in addition to the dollars that have gone up, the number of funds that are directed to specific purposes that we hold has gone up as well. To 275 different funds, as individuals, businesses, churches, and nonprofit organizations, all donors, um, see the impact the community can have on aligning around their charitable intent. We see donors giving while they're living, and we see donors planning and working on giving a legacy as they, as they pass. And every dollar that arrives at the Community Foundation does make a difference. Now, size matters in a foundation such as ours because the larger we are, the more that we can impact or influence community priorities through both granting and leadership. One other lever leveraging strategy, or what we call capital stacking strategy, is we're pursuing with other community partners, is, um, and we're pursuing with the city and the county, to do a collaborative grant writing position so we can reach outside of our county and bring funds to it. And we want to do that to assist with funding strategic priorities and, uh, and creating more collective resources. And just to give you an idea, the Fueling the Future project we talked about a few minutes ago, we actually wrote grants, the United Way and, and the Community Foundation wrote grants and, and had matching partners that brought $100,000. From that, Trinity Public Health was able to go ask for more money from a federal grant, and they brought in $900,000 to help hungry children. I cried the day they got that grant. We have a million dollars that were, no, were in the past not in our community, or nearly a million dollars, that now are making a difference for our families. The, within um, the Marshall Resources, Investments fall firmly within that. Now, as you can see, we've got a very highly trained professional investment committee, and they volunteer their time to help grow our funds. So they balance the needs of today with the growth of tomorrow, and I can assure you they do it very well, and I'll share that in just a moment. But through their work, they keep fattening the wallets of the charitable funds that we hold so they can do even more good charitable work within our communities. So what do our investment returns look like? Well, last year they would have been 12 to 18 percent on those that have a uh, significant equity portion. But as you can see, over the, it's better to look at trends. And over the last 10 years, they've gone from just shy of 7 percent to 9.5 percent every year. So we've added 9.5 cents to every dollar that we hold for charitable giving. Now, for the work that we do, we keep a penny of that 9.5 cents. And that penny we keep goes back into the community. It's an amazing model. So we... Um, we remain committed to managing our funds with the same vision today as any other day, with strong diversification, measured risk, and consistent rebalancing, and we expect that we'll continue to have strong returns. Our third pillar is focused, prioritized, efficient granting. Over the last year, thanks to the generosity of our donors, we've gifted out more than $5 million to charitable work within our community, $5 million. In addition, we've gifted 500,000, over 500,000, to scholarships to area, area kids. And then Muskegon Community College uses our portal to do their scholarship granting, and they granted out nearly another 400,000. So between the two of us, we're just shy of a million dollars in, in scholarships going out to students and making a difference. To, give you, to highlight a few of our fund grants, during the pandemic, we realized it right in about the middle of March that we needed to get funding available immediately. And, and the Community Foundation, the Muskegon Health Support Fund within our Community Foundation set aside $100,000 in matching money. 
And alongside of that, we got an additional over 200,000 in donations from the generous donors of our community and gifted over 300,000 out in just a, within a few months to um, an array of nonprofits doing work around health, food, hygiene, as assistance, shelter, and educational needs. And we watched the nonprofits mobilize at record speed to serve the sh very quickly shifting needs of our community. Uh, we also uh, came up with 25000 in matching money to in, a year ago, uh, last July, to start the first racial equity fund within the state. Alongside of that, we gave out over $100,000 the first six months. And again, this year, we recommitted and gave $50,000 to the racial equity funds. Now, I think it's important to see some of our cuter donors. Uh, these folks made a difference in the granting that we did, and we're thankful. Another grant each year, Muscatine Charity rewards those who are bettering our community with the Tom Hendricks Community Service Award. In partnership with Muscatine Charities, we are excited to announce Riding for Success as the 2021 Tom Hendricks Community Service Award recipient. Congratulations to Jenny and Crystal, who implemented this important initiative using their experience and love of horses to enhance quality of life for residents of all ages. With this award, Riding for Success will receive $7,500 to support the therapeutic riding. The Tom Hendricks Community Service Award was established by Muscatine Charities in 2016. This fund and award was established to honor Tom Hendricks for his decades of volunteer service and leadership within our community. We congratulate the great work that Writing for Success does, as well as the, as well as the participants that get to enjoy the services that they provide. Max Stanley's biography stated that Stanley's modeled for their colleagues and neighbors the idea that money earned was not solely for personal gain. Wealth was, not to, wealth was to be shared with others and invested in worthy causes. We saw that lived out through his son, Dick, and his wife, Mary Jo, both during their lifetime as well as at their passing. Through the Stanleys, we have granting funds available through to our local community, as well as we'll begin for the first time through the Community Foundation doing national granting around health and shelter, equity, and environment in the coming years. The Community Foundation of Greater Muscatine was built by a collection of those that cast similarities to Max and, and, and Betty and Dick and Mary Jo. Uh, they brought their leaders and visionaries and friends. They came together and they shared their time, their love, their action, and small and large gifts trying to shape our community. Under this granting, um, under this granting pillar, we have also streamlined our competitive granting by taking a racer to many of the hoops and restrictions we had around our granting to ease the burden for nonprofits to apply for our grants. We know it's their time burden and we know they're short staffed and we need to make it easier for them to get money for their important projects. And once again, we've begun uh, to work collaboratively. So we work in collaboration with United Way, Muscatine Charities, and Early Childhood Iowa to establish what we are referring to as a funder network. And in order to do that, we're centralizing and streamlining both the application process as well as the financial review process to make it easier for our nonprofits to apply to our various granting. So as you can see, we love collaboration at the Community Foundation. Some say it's, easy, it's um, better to go fast alone, or, excuse me, you can either go fast alone or you can go far together. We at the Community Foundation believe it's better to go fast together and leverage our resources. Next is winning team design. You know, our, and I mean this, um, our, we've, our community foundation found good fortune the day each of our um, team members said that they would choose to work with us at the community foundation. The team's committed and thoughtful in their work every single day improving the community foundation, and that's without falter or fail. And they are loyal to the community foundation's mission as well as to each other at, at an unusual level um, that I deeply appreciate. Now I say it's the difference between 211 degrees and 212 degrees Fahrenheit because that extra degree creates steam and runs a locomotive. And our team brings that extra degree every single day. Now I'm not gonna show you their pictures because I don't want anyone trying to hire them. So I think it's best if we, if we keep it low key. Now I'll give you a quick glimpse, but please don't try to hire them. This is the outstanding team of our community foundation that does the great work every single day. And our board. If you have a chance to see our board in, in action, you'd see why we're grateful for the, this talented team of truly community builders that come together. They provide adaptive insight. They provide expertise and dedication to the mission of improve the quality of life 
was in our county every single time. And they do that through a couple different ways. They do that through leadership, and they do that through careful stewardship of the donor dollars. And we're grateful for their time. They're very busy people, and they make an incredible amount of time to support the good work going on of the donor dollars through the Community Foundation. Another part of our team is the Louisa County Community Foundation, who we work closely with. So they're like, it's neighbors helping neighbors. So we provide some back-end services to help them leverage those. And what we know is they continue to grow through their donor dollars and their impact, and we, are, we love the fact that we can support their work as well. Now, I've often been told that I need to take off my rose-colored glasses, and I usually say, when I do, the naysayers win. It's what drew me to the Community Foundation. What I know is the Community Foundation is, is positioned to improve today and tomorrow. I don't want to live in a world that's designed by naysayers, and I certainly don't want to leave uh, my children in a world that's led by naysayers. So I'm going to continue to wear my rose-colored glasses. I'm going to look for the opportunity to wear my rose-colored glass, excuse me, rose-colored glasses when I dance, alongside of all you as donors and partners and nonprofits, taking action and making a difference in our community. I ask, what would Muscatine and the lives of our neighbors look like today if all the others that came before us had, not, had chosen not to believe in the vitality of our community, not erased in their mind the guardrails of, of what we were, and instead envisioned what we could be? Taking action through both problem solving and intentional design to create a future that they believe the next generation deserves. And that's our role as well. So we will continue to see the people through our rose-colored glasses, We'll continue to see our neighbors, and we will absolutely look to our children. And we will unfailingly continue to work with our donors, our partners, and our nonprofits to better the lives of our community. Now, I thank all those who have joined in the dance, doing the work, or creating the dollars to fill the gap in order to create a stronger future. I ask that we reimagine the future. I ask that you join us on the dance floor if you have not, and we will make the impossible possible. Thank you.